Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more History Matters, doing what I said, and having History Matters take up the now empty slot, as I have now completed the Salmonella journey. Um, yeah. <laughs> it feels weird to say that, to say that I have completed Salmonella, um, until he uploads a new video. Which I hope is, I hope he doesn't leave us hanging for too long again. You know, I would like even more frequent. I know he's uploaded two videos in this year alone. I would like at least four. <laughs> Preferably, I'd like one every three months. Yeah, no, that would still add up to four a year. Of course, even more preferably, I would like even more than that. But anyways, this is History Matters. Why didn't Italy join the Central Powers in World War I? A short animated documentary. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I'd love to join the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. Why didn't Italy join? I think we've talked, we've definitely, I think, watched at least one video that talked about this specific question before, I want to say. And I think it's been addressed within uh, the Great War series. I'm fairly certain it was uh, at the beginning, because, like, I think Italy had a deal with the Central Powers, and then, then like, went with the... Well, I think it was something weird like that. But anyways, let's dive in. When the First World War began, Italy was aligned with the Central Powers as a member of the Triple Alliance. Yes. Yet, despite its alliance with both Austria, Hungary and the German Empire, Italy never joined the war on their side. In fact, in 1915, Italy joined the conflict on the side of the Entente and fought against Austria-Hungary until the end of the war three years later. Which raises the question, why? Why didn't Italy Bitches. join the Central Powers in the First World War? So, when Italy came into existence in the latter half of the 19th century, it did so in tense circumstances. The Austrian Empire next door and its ruling family had held a great deal of sway over the peninsula for centuries, and Italy's birth had seen them defeated militarily and mostly pushed out of the region. To Italy's northwest, the once allied French wanted the same regions of North Africa as Italy. Tensions between the two sides remained high, and fearing that they couldn't win a war with France, the Italians turned to Germany and their old adversaries in Vienna for an alliance. All of this is just telling me that the Italians are bitches and that they should have al aligned with Germany and Austria-Hungary. In 1882, Italy signed a defensive pact with the two empires, leading to the birth of the Triple Alliance. The alliance saw them agree to aid the others if they were ever invaded, and both Italy and Austria agreed that they wouldn't expand further into the Balkans without compensating the other. The alliance was renewed every 10 years up until 1912, which came after Austria-Hungary had snatched Bosnia from the collapsing Ottoman Empire in oh. 1908. Italy wasn't happy with this and so demanded ah. compensation, preferably in the form of one Albania or these territories. Austria-Hungary said no, or more specifically, wait several years to see if we stay here. And as such, the Italian government considered the Triple Alliance to be dead. But I see. They renewed it again four years later because they didn't want to burn bridges in case they ever needed the backing of oh. Vienna or Berlin in the future. This had been Italy's foreign policy for decades at this point, since in 1902 it had signed a secret treaty with France. They agreed that the two would never go to war with the other in return for them respecting each other's spheres of influence in North Africa. Which ah, okay, you know, it makes sense now. Which is why, when the First World War broke out, Italy declared itself neutral. This wasn't to say it had closed the door to Austria, Hungary and Germany forever though. Its foreign policy in 1914 was dictated by one question. Who can give Italy the most? Germany offered it- Okay, still pretty- That's- Bitch move there, Italy. Bitch move. Italy this- You ain't loyal. You ain't loyal. You a hoe. You a hoe. From France if it entered the war. Whereas Austria-Hungary was less keen on Italy joining the war properly, and so offered some of its own lands to Italy on the condition that it stayed neutral and gave some trade concessions. Whereas the Entente offered Italy all of this, a promise that it would 100% honour after the war. Italy much preferred what Britain and France was offering and so it signed the Treaty of London agreeing Treaty of London, Italy agrees to fight the central powers so that less Austrians will shoot at the Russians and Serbians. In return for this, the Entente totally promises to give Italy a bunch of land along the Adriatic Sea. Unless a Yugoslavia is born, in which case it gets the land, but that's very unlikely, so don't worry about it. The Entente will also provide advice to the Italian military. We recommend attacking the same place 12 times at a horrendous cost. Well, I don't think... Was that under the advice of the Entente? Or was that... I thought that... What I've been led to believe was that that was just entirely the brainchild of the totally competent Luigi Cadorna. ...freeing to aid the Entente. 
which surely meant that Italian entry against the Central Powers was guaranteed, right? Well, no. Antonio Salandra was the Prime Minister of Italy in 1915, but his position was very fragile, and Italy itself was politically very divided, with most people much preferring neutrality. This wasn't out of some deep Italian love for the Central Powers, but because war sucks and you can make a lot of money trading with warring states. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Salandra was fiercely pro-Entente, whereas the last Prime Minister and Salandra's main opponent Giovanni Giolitti was pro-Central Powers. When the writing looked to be on the wall, Giolitti met with the German Chancellor to arrange what he could do if he replaced Salandra. Knowing that if he did nothing he would lose his job, Salandra did the only thing he could. He quit. He mm. did this not because he actually wanted to quit, because he knew that Parliament wouldn't back him and by quitting he forced the king to choose. If the king let him resign, then the king backed the central powers. If the king refused to accept his resignation, then it meant that he backed the Entente. Oh. He knew the parliament would never- Okay, that's- This is a- For once, a clever Italian. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to Italy. I'm sorry to every Italian watching. Jokes, but like, also, your people and the Italian leadership in World War One fucking stupid except for this guy <laughs> act against the king's wishes at such a time and so when the king ordered Salandra to stay in office his position was secure and thus Italy was free to join the war alongside France and Britain which it did in May 1915 literally the only clever Italian in World War One <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode with what a special thanks to my patreon supporters James all right I've got nothing to add here at the end this was a this was decent I don't think it's it was good, but I do think that they perhaps, I think this is one of those cases where this is actually a question that could not be done in three minutes. Um, I think this is one of the rare cases where their skilled writing uh, wasn't, wasn't even able to do it. I don't think this is a question that could be handled even by their skilled writing in three minutes. Um, they, the, there were some things that they brushed over. I think specifically the past relation, like the, I think what I would have liked to see more of, more of a deeper discussion on is that, um, got brushed over the relationship Italy had with these other two central powers, and also a little bit more of an explanation on the political situation. We got it was decent. And I think overall, I am satisfied with the explanation that we got in terms of the political side of th the internal politics side of things inside uh, with Italy. But I, I would have, um, I think if I had a choice, I would have much preferred to have that also extrapolated on, expanded upon. Um, so I think, you know, them going with the, well, obviously the, these two things were the two like, or well, three big reasons, right? There are three big reasons. Uh, Italy falling out with Austria-Hungary. Uh, Italy being like, yo, who can give me more uh, stuff? Slash also the deal they made with France. We're like, hey, let's not have beef in Africa anymore. Let's respect each other. And then the internal politics. All three of those things, I think, suffer from needing, like, all being within the same short video. Um, I think each one of those topics alone could could cover a three like they could do a good job like covering each one of those within three minutes. So maybe this is a question that would have been better suited to for ten minute history in my in my eyes. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.